What is going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome to Double Coverage. Hope you're still living, loving, and breathing sport. I'm Dom with the great man, Sauce. What's happening? How are you, Dom? I'm oh, good, got the, mate. Got the, got the baseball jersey on, so anyone who follows the baseball, the baseball season's back, so not that we cover it here on, on, on the show, but... I just got a Jordan got jumper on. That's me, Jordan jumper Mets. tonight. Pretty, Mets. That's pretty much it. James, it's been a big week in sport, Tom. It's been a massive, massive week in sport. And uh, there you go. Top of the table. Yes. Yes. You can thank, thank you Kobe Minu for that. Earth. Thank you very much, uh, United. Yeah. Uh, even though uh, Liverpool could have had 15 goals in the first half, doesn't uh, matter. It's not. You, know, it's, you don't it's, take your chances. That's what happens. It's not about how you start. It's how you finish. And we we finished shit house because we gave away a penalty. But besides the point, um, we did a job for Arsenal. As we spoke about last week, you shouldn't rely on other teams. You need to do your job and then worry about the other stuff after it. And you did your job and then United helped you out just a little bit. So just a tiny, tiny bit, which helped. So welcome to everyone. James, Jules is on. Who knows what we're going to get out of the chat tonight. People on Instagram, Welcome. Uh, as you said, it was a big week in sport. We're gonna and we're gonna start with the AFL. The NBA, we'll get into it next week. Playoffs will be uh, raring to go, so we can give our predictions and stuff. Yeah, it's all, it's all sewn up that. in the West. There, Houston yeah. got knocked out, so you know wherever those playoff teams uh, finish in that bottom uh, bottom section, who who ends up in the play-in and so on, that's still to play out. But it is what it is. Um, in our eyes, and we, as we've said before, the playoffs is now just. 10 teams because it's essentially, teams, you know, you, you have as good a chance to make it when you, if you make it into the 10th, what the, the heat made it to the finals last season from ninth <laughs> or whatever it is. So just yeah. proves it as you get in the 10, you're in the playoffs. That's, that's it's 10 it. teams, mate. That's it. There's only five spots in each conference that mean jack shit from 11 to 15. So everything else is worth something from 10 onwards. So, uh, yep, that'll be kicking off next week, but we will get into the AFL because it was a big, big, big round. And it was because it was gather round. So every game was played in Adelaide. That is South Australia. For those around the world that are not sure where Adelaide is located here in Australia. Um, some good games, a lot of low scoring games. Um, things to take out of this round, um, personally. I think this is something we should do every week, Source. Just a few takes out of the round. Just top three things. Number one for me, North and North and Essendon is shit. Uh, <laughs> number two. <laughs> number two, Adelaide are poo-poo still, as we mentioned on this show last week. They are actually poo-poo. They're no good. And number three, um, putting aside all the good teams, number three, Sydney... A bit shaky, a bit shaky, Sydney. Not sold just but yet. Not sold, yeah. I'm not, yeah, yeah. So they're my three things. I've pretty much ragged on three teams and four teams. I'll say, I'll say number four. Um, when is there ever going to be a point where they take the review system? Oh no, seriously. Dumber. When when's when's it going to be? Because we review, we just review if the ball goes through the sticks now. So this is and this I I'm, I think I mentioned I don't know if I've mentioned it on the you show, did. but I've spoken at length at, at times about this about the NRL going back in phases of play, right? That directly led to a goal, which then cost Fremantle the game. Oh, I knew you were going. Right? You, you, the gift, the gift that keeps on giving, Carlton and the uh, AFL. <laughs> Well, uh, clearly there's an agenda here from the AFL to oh, want to no. get Carlton <laughs> the to get their 17th premiership, mate, you know. Um, it's, 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 seriously, yeah, you know, that's the real the, the real uh, talking point here. But honestly, that's that's how I feel. Now, I don't know if there will ever be a point where and, – and, and I'm even just to the point where, all right, we're, we're going to take the score review system seriously. Yeah, we're not going to – talk about what I'm saying, going back in phases of play and, and so on. But even just getting to the point where when a guy's, if it's touched, it's not blurry like there's 15 hands there on the footage, mate. Like, yeah, but the, you know, yeah. this is where I'm saying, if you want to have the review system, 
you got to do it to 100% and quality. You can't yeah. just have Mickey Mouse rubbish. You know? But, Earth, oh, oh, wait, leave the it with the umpire. But, it worked but, for 110 years or whatever it was. Leave it that yeah. way, mate. No one gave but, a shit. The one thing I'll defend the AFL on on this source is the review system used for goals and behinds. Um, they're not going to review a mark. You know what I mean? That like I don't think we've ever seen that before. No, well, yeah. in the guise of the rules, yes, they can't. Don't, yeah, they can't. They actually can't. That's but then, but then, but, then, but, but then, yeah, but then, where's it end? You got to review every single kick and mark, every stoppage. Like fuck, the game will go for four hours, bro. It's good for the score review. I get that. But even that, that's become a bit of a, it's, that's become a Mickey Mouse. You want to talk about Mickey Mouse? That's become a Mickey Mouse. Because yeah, now, look, mate, how many they send me? It's ridiculous. Listen, listen. Goal umpires. Goal umpires. I'm just going to state this beautifully. Do you want a job? Or do you want there to, to be no more goal umpires and you want to lose your job? Because the way you're trusting the technology, the AFL is just going to look at it and go, how can we keep more money in our pockets? You're gone. That's what's going to happen. Because if you're going to review everything when it's a clear goal, mate, and no one's touched the ball, and you're just like, oh, I just want to make sure. Umpires calls a goal, but I just want to make sure. Bro, they just don't need you. What do they need you for? They just invest heavily on a GoPro, the AFL. Yeah, a GoPro, yes. That's all they need. <laughs> Because what they got at the moment, I don't know. They've got a Motorola Razor uh, mobile phone camera. I don't know what the hell's going on in the AFL. But seriously, if they could get some 8K, 16K bloody cameras like the NFL do, why do they need, why do they need goal umpires for? Seriously. They say they review every score after the score's being completed anyway. Thank you. I was just about to say that, and you've. So what do they need them? Out out. So this why is do my, they need them? This is also the point on it. If they review it anyway, how about just back your call? And if it's wrong, technically it's getting reviewed anyway on the ball back to the center. They'll pull it back and say, "No, no, no. Actually, it was a point." Yeah, but that's. But they don't yeah. do it. But yeah, but then it defeats the purpose of umpire's call and the, like, because you know it can be inconclusive at times, mate. That's why you need well, the human. That's why you need. Will... That's why you need human error in there, because <laughs> it, it's inconclusive. I, I don't know. It's it's turning into what happened to the chip in the ball. I thought the chip in the ball was coming. Or yeah. Is that next season, mate? They need a chip in their head. Some of these people, like seriously, the the VAR. We thought this will be great. This will be great. And then what happened? The teething issues with that in in soccer. Yeah. Yeah. It's sure. just, it became a joke with some of the stuff. And then they had to change the rules for offside to make it that where it's a scoring, like a scoring part of your body is offside for it to be offside. Like how many offsides with the VAR given off a fingertip, mate? You're not scoring off a fingertip. How's that giving you an advantage? Like they had to review the whole thing. So all the umpires are just lemons. I'm just telling you, you you rely heavily on one aspect of something in any job. That means that uh, you can be replaced and you won't be needed. And if that means they can save money and use it elsewhere, you're gone. Everyone will be like, "Oh, you're being ridiculous." You need you need boundary umpires, mate, because they throw the ball in. You need field umpires because they make the calls and they ball the ball up and they give free kicks. What are goal umpires doing? Touching a post. How hard is it for the ball to hit the post for the for something to flush on the screen and say hit post? Like there's someone in a bunker that goes, oh, the ball hit the post behind over the PA. How hard is it to do that? And it flushes on the scoreboard. So just be just be wary, goal umpires out there, all around the nation. All right. Just going, oh, I'm second guessing myself. Because if you're second guessing yourself, that means you can't do your job. Simple as that. As harsh as that sounds. Anyway, let's get to gather round. Uh, started on Thursday night. Crows got defeated by the D's. Oh, Great game by the track. Played very well in this. They won it by 15, 78 to 63. Uh, the Friday night specials, mate. North and Essendon, our two teams showed up. Positive thing is. Yeah, absolutely pumped. We both scored 42 points. Source. North and Essendon. We both lost by 70 plus. 
No, nah, you lost by 69. We lost by 70. You know, the scores were almost identical. It was 112 to 42 to 111 to 42. It was great. Just so, nice. yeah. Anyway. Ad- uh, Essendon cool. fans, I-, I said this to someone on on uh, on the weekend, on Sunday, and I said, es- if you're an Essendon fan and you're watching that first quarter, if I've never seen a team sell their supporter base fool's gold in 30 minutes of football, it was the Essendon Football Club on Friday night. But I messaged you and went, fuck, I actually reckon your game plan, you've changed, turned over a new leaf. And I said, like, everyone that was bagging Brad Scott, like, this is a guy that has shown success in the past. Like, this looks like a new Essendon. Boy, oh boy, did I eat those words that I met, that I sent to you. Jeepers. Connor Rosie himself defeated Essendon. Yeah, a no lot, lot, of, lot of questions, a <laughs> lot, of, lot of questions, mate, a lot of questions. You know, first I'll say, you know, in the coaching's box, when a player gets on top like he does, like surely there's a, an onus on the coaching box to say, no, 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 we need, to, we need to shut him down. Like the way he was getting it from clearances and with his pace just sprinting away and, you know, breaking the lines, that opens up the game so much. Um, so, you know, first thing is to- uh, stopping, you know, Rosie when he was getting on top. Second thing is, mate, we 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 let you know we let Soldo run all over the t- top of both our ruckmen. He, he was selling candy, kicking snaps. That's how good of a game Soldo was having, mate. You thought he was he was like a a prime uh, Nick Natanui out there, the way he was you know roaming around. But it was just it was just lacking on so many levels. I mean, they w- ramped up the pressure. They, they went man on man uh, from the kickouts. Didn't allow us to, to have our chip marks, chip marks, which then we, you know, get run off the back of when we get Redmond and the likes of Nick Martin moving through who are able, better ball users coming out of the back line. They shut all that down. And mate, we look like a deer in headlights. We didn't know what to do. Kicking the ball long down the line. We kick it long down the line. We, we can't even nullify the contest, losing the contest long down the line. Then when we do make it a good bit of play and we get it through, bombing it into our 50 and just you know giving our forwards no chances. The amount of times we kicked it to the opposite side of our forward and not even gave them advantage, um, disgraceful. Then you got you know guys running into open goals and you know although be it the game was dead, but running into open goals and not being not being able to finish it, running in 25 meters out, 30 meters out on a slight angle. Just, just terrible. Um, when the game got tough, the, the leaders didn't stand up. I mean, you know, Zach Merritt, I, I can't say anything. I mean, everyone had a bad game, but he was one of the only guys who really just put in a, you know, a tough effort. Um, he always puts too many, shift, that guy. Always. too many, too many passengers. We we look slow. Um, we now got another injury. You know, Perkins was playing good in the midfield. Now he's injured. I think he's done a hamstring. Ridley's uh, done a quad. So we're not getting back uh, Ridley again for another three, four weeks. He's re-injured his quad. So, you know, all those people said, oh, it's all right. It's all right. You know, we're, we're going to get some players. We're back. going to get some players. Well, we, you know, we're we not. And I'm telling you right now, Essendon's going nowhere this year. It was just, just fact. And what's going to annoy me even more is if he keeps playing these guys like – um Cali, um, uh, and and you know, look, even Heppel to an extent, I think he still keeps his spot for a portion of time until we can get a few more players. But you know, some of the older guys, you know, what's the point? Are they going to be there when when we're going to be contesting for a flag? Because we're not contesting for a flag this year, that's for sure. I can tell you that with a hundred percent certainty. Or right? next year, or the year after. So that's, what are we doing? Real. What are, what are we doing? You know, you need to get games into these guys. You know, um, like. Yeah, just just frustrating, just yeah. frustrating. You know, in all, in all honesty, Magda says, "Where was the Essendon edge versus Port?" I don't think they've got an edge. They beat St Kilda the week Saving before. Saving it for round ten every time we no, verse North that, Melbourne. That's when it comes. Yeah, but they beat you beat St Kilda the week before. But I think based off what we saw on the weekend, the Saints aren't that good. No, they just barely beat uh, Richmond, right? Seven yeah. points. So I don't know. I don't know. North, I'm not going to get into it. I don't really want to go there. Um. I've been so critical on them, and then I had a moment, and I don't know if it's more of an excuse, but realistically, I sat down. I was like, "Why are we like we haven't seen any improvement? We do have patches where it does look good." And I, I thought to myself, "This is technically the first year Alistair Clarkson 
has as the head coach of the football team because he wasn't there for the whole season last year. We forget that. So I was like, maybe I'm I'm being a bit too harsh. It is what it is. Um, I said we win five or more games or seven games. Maybe we'll be lucky to win three. So unless, hopefully with him in charge, second half of the season, we start putting some stuff together. But you've got to hope it all comes together with no injuries on your list for it to actually work. So hopefully we can survive past the buys and then end the season pretty strong as a football club. Otherwise, another lost season there. Uh, West Coast lose to Sydney by 26. Uh, We spoke about the Dockers-Carton game. That was decided off um, the review system there. Official Harley Reid jet. Harley Reid. Yeah, he's a jet. He's a jet. Uh, Dockers lose by 10. No, it is what it is. They wanted to beat Gold Coast. We've got McCurchin. McCurchin is good. He's going to be a freak. So I think it'll be better than it'll be better than Cheezel. Yeah. In the clearances, he's a monster. Like he's very good. Uh, dogs lose to cats by four points, which was actually, in my opinion, that was this is probably game of the round. Game of the round. Game of the round. Yeah, yeah it was great. Yeah. It was a very good the, game. Your boy, the Bonts, put on a clinic. I made him captain one minute. Source one minute before the game started, I said, oh, "I'm going to put the captain on the Bonts for my Super Coach team." I think he scored 144 or something. So. I was happy about that. Uh, the Giants get the win against the Suns by 28. Uh, Saints by seven over the the uh, Tigers. And then another great game. It ended up turning out to be a great game. was uh, the Pies over the Hawks by five. Um, they had the jump on them and they came back. Yeah, they did come so, back to the Hawks. Yes, Magda. He's the only player. I'm going to give A plus for effort. On uh, Friday, that is Charlie Combin, and in my opinion, I'd give him a B, B plus, where the rest of the team as players probably got a C or less. So he was the best player on the park for North by a mile. Uh, games this week. Let's get your tip source. D's Lions Thursday night. D's. I believe D S D's. It's. Yep, I'm going D's as well. Dogs, Dons, Friday night football. Dogs, lock it in. We've only won one of the last 10 games against the Dogs. They are an absolute bogey side. They will win, guaranteed. I'm going Dogs. Uh, Giants, Saints at Canberra. Giants. I'm going GWS as well. Uh, Carlton versus Adelaide at Marvel. Carlton. Yep, Carlton. I reckon this will be a close game. Yeah? Yeah, I just got a feeling. Uh, Adelaide's Suns. been able to claw games back. So if they can get to a point where they don't, they're able to keep it close, not coming from 30 points down every time or twenty, you know, five goals down, yeah, they might have a chance for a little cheeky upset. But don't get your hopes up. I still think Carlton's the better side. But Marvel, you know, they don't play Marvel the best, the Blue Baggers. They should get the job done. They should get the job done. Uh, Suns, Hawks. Suns. I think it's up it, there, though. It is It is at Gold Coast. I'm going Suns as well. Port versus Fremantle, Adelaide Oval. I'm going to go with Port Adelaide. But Fremantle oh. are firming up to be quite a good side, and I've um, completely underestimated them preseason. And if they keep playing in this manner, I mean, you'd nearly lock them in for a top eight. For sure. I'm going I'm going port as well. Uh the next game, I am not looking forward to this. Geelong versus North Melbourne at GMHBA Stadium. You have the line at 59 points, Dom. They've got you potentially losing by 60 points. They are a dollar three and we are twelve fifty in this game. Yeah, you probably should be about twenty five. <laughs> I reckon they've undersold you there. 25 bucks. Just close the market. <laughs> After the first quarter, it'll be nine hundred dollars to come back. <laughs> the odds are just balloon. Um, and then the last game, Optus, we've got West Coast versus Richmond. Uh whew. You would think I think Richmond's pretty short favourites, but geez. They're dollar thirty-three. 
Maybe yeah. West Coast can get get their first win potentially. I don't know. I'm gonna go Richmond. Better not do something stupid. I'm tipping West Coast. Yeah, I thought you would. I'll go Richmond. Yeah, I actually, I think, think West Coast win. I, I think I they reckon win. they're actually all right. Uh, the buyers this week after the Pies and the Swans. So very nice. Uh, the ladder as it stands. GWS on top, then the D's, Swans, and Blues. That's the top four, just outside, equal on points, down on percentage. Yeah. Geelong on fifth, Port sixth, Frio seventh, both on 12 points. Eight points is the Dogs in eighth. And then we have all on eight points behind the Dogs off percentage are Saints, Gold Coast, Collingwood, Essendon, up to 12th spot, Lions and uh, Tigers 13 14, then the Crows, Hawks, North, and West Coast all winless on zero points. Yep. So, there's this nice. case says on Instagram West Coast have to break through soon. I agree. I agree. I and mean, it could be this week, could be again this week against Richmond. We spoke about this at the top of the show, Magda. So, just just go back and have a listen. Um, on the reviews, Carlton's forward line should dominate. Yep. If Toby Pink comes in, yep, pencil in Hawkins for. Oh, sorry. Hawkins for 10 if Toby Pink comes in. Carlton's forward line should dominate. Freo does have the number one defense in the league. Uh, no, I did not, Magda. I'll go have a, a listen to it. What was it regarding? Be interesting. Corns versus Darcy. Verbal joust. Just what you want. Uh, where am I going? Super coach quickly. We scored 2108. Oh, uh, not we bad. Went, we went up. No, nah, that was shit for the round. We went up eight, oh. uh, 800 spots. Only the team's struggling, isn't it? Yeah, a little bit. I I've made one trade this week. I just took out uh, a Hall on the bench for Closey because he's got 108 for Gold Coast and he's cheap. We got 136k in the bank and work out what we want to do. I'll put a picture of it on. Uh, I'll take a photo of it now and put a picture on uh, IG. And we can work out what needs to be done. It is a buy round, so it's only taking the top 18 scores this week that's it all right let's move on to the epl where saucy Ooh. is one happy chappy at the moment yes uh let me get the results up my boy got red carded this morning in the saudi super cup it was honestly i don't know if you've seen it you know what's you, you, know you know what's funny everyone was like it's the end of an era this guy's finished bro the guy's kicked Two back-to-back hat tricks in his last two games, <laughs> and you're bagging him. Did you see the the red he got though? It was the worst red card I've ever seen. It was so bad. You, they said he elbowed the guy in the head. He lifted his arm up and he moved it across. He didn't even touch his face, and he got a straight red for it. <laughs> but as you said, they can't beat Al Halal. That's why the league is over. That's why we don't cover the SPL. They can't beat him in the regular season games, Asian Cup. Saudi Super King Cup, it doesn't matter what it is, mate. Burger King Cup, it doesn't matter. They're not beating them. So, and their unbeaten yes, streak is now up to th- I think, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, their undefeated streak, I think now is uh, 33 games straight source they've won, Al Halal, in all comps. They've won 33 games in a row, which is remarkable, to be honest. All right, let's get to uh, some of the games because we had some rippers because. We had uh, two sets of games to go through. Nottingham, Fulham, 3-1. Newcastle, Everton, 1-1. Burnley, Wolves, 1-1. Bournemouth, Crystal Palace, 1-0. West Ham, Tottenham, 1-1. Brentford, Brighton, nil all. Uh, We covered the Arsenal, Luton, 1. Man City defeated Villa, 4-1. Liverpool, 3-1. United, 4-3. I don't think we've spoken about that, have we? No, United, 4-3. That was great. Good uh, loss there for United. Then City beat Palace, 4-2. West Ham 2-1, Luton 2-1 over Bournemouth, Fulham lose 1-0 to Newcastle, Burnley lose to Everton 1-0, Brentford and Aston Villa 3-0 draw, Arsenal get more goals for the goal difference with a 3-0 win over Brighton, Uh, Sheffield and Chelsea play out a 2-2 draw, Uh, Tottenham defeat uh, Nottingham 3-1, and Man United uh, get some, uh, some handy points, I guess. And help out Arsenal massively by getting them back on top by 10 goals with the goal difference, equal with Chelsea on 71 points on the table. So, massive result. Chelsea, Liverpool. Uh, uh, Liverpool, sorry. 
uh, and Arsenal, Arsenal and Liverpool now equal on top with 71 points apiece. Uh, and Arsenal with that 10 goal buffer. Uh, Kobe Mainu's goal was ridiculous. Cracker. Cracker. And I was, know, messaging, I was messaging you, I was losing the plot. I was going crazy. I don't know what Juan Basaka was doing with the tackle down the other end. Yeah. Um, absolute Lemon tackle, but it is what it is. Um, you did well to, to to get a result in that game, um, but um, yeah, Liverpool. You know this is gonna. You know, if if they don't go on to win, if they don't go on to you know win, they'll they'll think about that game because they probably they yeah. should have definitely won. One hundred percent. Casemiro lucky to get a yellow. Should have been red. Yes, I agree. Yeah, uh, Darwin been. and Diaz need to put the ball in the back of the net. Well, Diaz did. Um, Darwin probably should have. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, it is what it is. I'll take the two two, mate. We stink. So to get a two all draw, not great. If you're a Liverpool fan. And as you can see, I didn't rub it in your face, Liverpool fans. All right. Not like you all came out of the woodwork and gave us shit because we lost to Chelsea. Yeah. That, and then you won and then you wonder why then you wonder why I want Arsenal to win the league, mate. Because I can't stand you and City. City are cheats. And Liverpool just make me sick. So, well, Arsenal's flying. What can I say, mate? We we won three nil with against Brighton, where we deserved that game. Played very well, and um, yeah, we've big Champions League fixture tomorrow. So um, you got that on the cards, Doma? Yeah, I do have that on the cards. I'll get to that in a second. Just just one thing. Yeah, go on, go on. Yeah. No, no, go, go, and then I'll I'll pick you back. I was going to say it'll be interesting just to see how it um it all plays out with uh, I think eight games left, I believe. Yeah, uh, no, six seven games, games left. left, six or seven games. Yeah, I think they play thirty eight. Yeah, thirty eight. It's round thirty three this week. Some teams, some, or some teams might have a play a catch up game somewhere in there. Could have been uh, some have been thirty one. Yeah, yeah, there would be some postponements because Champions League and stuff like that. So they'll play a catch up game, but those are crazy at the end. You know what that's like towards the end where they play two games in a week. Like that's where, yeah, it's awesome that you play Champions League, but if you're in a position to win the title, fuck, you got to back up a lot of football, and that's where obviously it comes in handy to have depth on your squad, which is where you lacked last year. And you had so some of those key injuries, and you weren't able to fulfill the roles that were needed. This year, you're in a better predicament, obviously, which is good. Um, but who's Liverpool's got a few injuries, which is not great for them. But Man City, they've got another starting eleven on the bench anyway that they can put on. So they're the team, really. And the, the interesting thing I was going to mention about City is how does Everton this morning get deducted two points again, another two points? For financial fair play, and nothing is happening to this squad, this other football club. It's it's baffling, actually baffling, to be honest. So, anyway, let's get to this week's games. They're getting away with it, Donna. They'll get away with it. They'll get away with it. Newcastle, Tottenham. That's a ripper. Uh, that's on the thirteenth. That's on Saturday at eleven thirty. Uh, Early one. Brent- yeah, Brentford, Sheffield. The- all these games are at. 12, Brentford, Sheffield, Burnley, Brighton, Man City, Luton, Nottingham Wolves. Uh, the 2.30 game Sunday morning, Bournemouth United, Liverpool versus Crystal Palace. Sunday I think you're going to you're gonna start getting up for all these games, aren't you? I'm <laughs> going to have to. I'll probably, I'll probably end up night. watching Liverpool yeah. game into the Arsenal game. Yes, most yeah. likely. Uh, sun, uh, sun, uh, Sunday night. 11 o'clock, West Ham, Fulham. Monday morning, 1.30, Arsenal, Aston Villa. And then Tuesday, 5 a.m., Chelsea versus Everton. So some crackers coming up, Sauce. And uh, good luck is all I have to say. Good luck. So uh, James says, I want to see United relegated if you want to hear my real thoughts. Yeah, that's fair enough. Relegation, that's actually quite sweet coming from a Liverpool fan. I want to see your club non-existent. So how well I feel as a Man United fan. <laughs> it enough. It um, enough. Uh, the Champions League games tomorrow are Arsenal versus Bayern, uh, Real Madrid versus Man City, 
And then on Thursday, we have Atletico Madrid versus Dortmund and PSG Barcelona. Uh, The second legs will be coming up the following week and we'll get into that on next week's podcast. Good luck, mate. You're going to need it. We'll beat uh, tomorrow. We'll beat Bayern tomorrow. I hope you do. Bayern's pretty much rest their team. They can't win their league, can they? (laughs) Harry Kane. Mate, they, lost on the week, they lost on the weekend 3 2 to Heidenheim away from home. Know, you think they're going to come the, to the Emirates? They're going to come to the Emirates and get the result. Come on. They've man. lost the plot. I love it. I love it. Um, that's it for the world game. Next up, just a quick shout out, mate, as we do. Uh, F1. What's to be said? What is to be said? The great man, you know. I love, you know what I love the most? You know what I love the most, Source, on social media? The keyboard warriors that have so much faith in Formula One at the moment that in a, in a free practice run, when anyone but Verstappen gets on top in a free practice, man, this guy's going to have a big weekend. He's going to, comes qualifying, who's sitting P1? Max Verstappen, and who wins the race by 12 and a half seconds? Max Verstappen, and everyone, signs is going to contend. Mate, Science is going to contend. He won one race. Who didn't the participate in the race? Lose this time. Yeah. Is his car up. up? That's it. I love how Science, out. I love how Science wins one race, and it's like, this guy's going to contend. He can win it. You forget the guy wasn't on the track. And you believe a Ferrari can win? He lost by 21 seconds to Verstappen. When he's on the track, he loses by 21 seconds. And you're telling me you think you can beat him. Shut up. You know nothing. I'm sorry. This guy wins. We've done the projections last year on the podcast. At the end of the season, he'll be close to 70, I think 75 we, uh, race wins. I think it brings him in the top four all time. In Formula One wins, he's obviously uh, 35 behind Lewis Hamilton, who's got 110. Hamilton's at the end of his career. Verstappen is 26 years old, ladies and gentlemen. And he will leave Red Bull. I think he will leave Red Bull. We can get into that later on in the year. But he gets the job job done. Perez in second, Sainz in third, Leclerc fourth, Norris in fifth, Alonso sixth. Seventh, Russell. Piastri, the Aussie, uh, in the top 10 again in eighth. Hamilton, ninth. Sonoda 10th, uh, and then after that, as we say, we don't care except for the other Aussie, which Daniel Ricciardo, he was put on notice going into this race source, and he did not finish. So not great for Danny Rick, which is quite shattering. Uh, the next race is the Chinese Grand Prix, and that is on Sunday, the 21st of April, and that is a 5 p.m. race time source. Gee, some um, nice, nice, you know, yeah, got to nice times. a bit of the Japanese Grand Prix on the weekend. It was, it's good. It's yeah, there's good. some nice times coming up. Very nice times, which is, which is great. So tune into your local guides. And of course, we'll uh, keep you updated as they come through. Over to you, Source, for some uh, UFC. Yes, Thomas. So UFC over the weekend, we had Fight Night, uh, uh, Brandon Allen against Chris Curtis. I'll just bring. I'll just bring it up because I was I was very much prepared today, so we can we can bring it up. Uh, Brandon Allen getting the win over Chris Curtis. This was a cracker fight. It went the distance. Um, was a lot closer than you know than well not a lot closer than it looked. It was a very very close fight. Could have went either way. Uh, Brandon Allen gets the win in the end. Uh, then you had featherweight division uh, that was in the middleweight division and Allen over Curtis. You had. Featherweight division, Damon Jackson defeating Alexander Hernandez uh, over th- a three-round split decision. Uh, then you had the Morgan Cherry defeated by Chappelle Marcel in the featherweight division over the th- three rounds in a split decision. And then, if not sure if you've s- seen this, Dommer, but I'll, and I, and I'm not sure if you remember no. me saying about this guy, but Ignacio. Bama Hart and Bama Martis, and I've called him out on this show before. Watch out for him. He's in the lightweight division. Head kick, knockout, like one kick, bang, good night. See you later. Spectacular knockout. Uh, he defeats Christos Giagos, the American, knocks him out in the first round with a head kick. Now, if you haven't seen the knockout, go find a, a clip somewhere because it was absolutely phenomenal. Uh, I'm, I'm sure if you just 
typed it in uh, hashtag something on Twitter or TikTok, you'll find it, find a replay. Cracker knockout. Uh, look out for him uh, to come up the ranks in the lightweight. He's young. He's up and coming. He's he's hungry. So watch out for him in the future. And then you had Charlie Campbell defeating Trevor Peak in the lightweight division, and that was the the main cards. And then you had the the uh, the prelims. So check out those if if you want to check out those. But Doma, that's Here not what go. it's about. It's all yeah. about this. Sweet. It's all about this weekend, Doma. It's all about this weekend. Here we go. Here we UFC go. 300. 300. This is probably one of the best cards you will ever see. Obviously headlined by uh, Alex Pereira and Jamal Hill. Alex Pereira currently has the fight. We know what happened with Jamal Hill. He, he, he won his fight against Glover Tashira. Then he um, unfortunately done his Achilles playing some basketball. Um, and then, you know, had to vacate the belt. But he's back. He's back. He's hungry. Um, and he's going to take on Alex uh, Poatan Pereira uh, for the, the lightweight belt, um, light heavyweight belt, I should say, in the main event. And then the co-main event, Zhang Wei Li against Yan uh, Zhao Nan. Um, it's going to be an absolutely phenomenal fight, that women's strawweight fight. It will be a belter. And then you've got Justin Gaethje against Max Holloway in the lightweight. That's a cracker. Charles Oliveira against Armin Texturian, that's going to be an absolute cracker as well. Then you got Bo Nickel against Cody Brundag, and then you've got in the prelims. In the prelims, yes, you're in hearing the this. Prelims. In the fucking prelims. It's not even the, the what main. What the game. hell? You got Yuri Pochazaka against Alexander Rakic, number two versus number five in the uh, in the light heavyweight. What division. the hell? You got Calvin Qatar against Al Jermain Sterling. Al Jermain's back. In action after his loss. Then you got Holly Holm against Kayla Harrison. You got Saduf Yusuf against Diego Lopez. And then in the early prelims, you got Jalen Turner against Renato Mociano. Jessica Andrade against Marina Rodriguez. Bobby Green against Jim Miller. That's a cracker. Devison Figueroa against Cody Gabrant. What the um, hell? Mate, the card's unbelievable. Like any of these guys here, any of these fights here could all be on the main card. That is ridiculous. It is probably one of the greatest cards I've ever seen. There's going to be some belters, of that course. Of course. of course, I'll give my uh, uh, thoughts on the fights. I think Devious and Figueroa gets the win over Cody Gambrand. I'm going to go with Bobby Green over Jim Miller. Jessica Andrade over Marina Rodriguez. Uh, we're going to go with Jalen Turner over Renato Mociano. Uh, we're going to go with... We'll go with the rank man because I, I haven't seen too much of these guys. So Sadiq Yusuf against Diego Lopez. Uh, we're going to go with Kayla Harrison over Holly Holm only because I've seen the odds. So this Kayla Harrison must be an absolute gun because let me just tell you, the, she's like a dollar fifteen cents, So she must be good. So I'm just going to go with the, the punters on that one. I'm going to go Al Jermaine Sterling over Calvin Kata. Yuri Pochizaka over Alexander Rakic. Uh, Bo Nickel over Cody Brundag. I'm going to go with Charles Oliveira over Armin Testurian, even though, uh, you know, the odds favor uh, Testurian. We'll see. I think Oliveira could bounce back. He's obviously, he's an absolute jet. He, he's won the title before. So I'm going to go with the, the former champ. Uh, and then I'm going to go with Justin Gaethje over Max Holloway. This is going to be a cracker fight. Domo. This this fight's going to be unbelievable. And then I'm going Zhang Wei Li over Yan Zhao Nan, uh, Zhang Wei Li will get the win, and then I'm going Poetan Alex Pereira. I've got to go. I've got to go with my guy, Donna. You know, I've got to go with my guy. Hang on, where am I? Get it up. Get it up. Bring me big. That's oh, it. Yeah, just on. use that. Just use that. There you Bring go. me big. There it is. There it is. The Tyson Beck. What's this one? Number two. Number to fifteen. Got it in a part trade, part cash deal. Hold on to that. Come on. I've got another. I've actually got another one, but he's going to get the win and he's going to solidify himself uh, in absolute glory. He's going to solidify himself. Um, and, you know, it, it's going to be a cracking fight because Jamal Hill has hands. Like he's, you know, he, he can throw them with the best of them. Um, but Alex Pereira, so can Alex Pereira. And we've seen in the last fight against Yuri when he got rocked a bit, this and that. And then Yuri got a bit too comfortable, came in that bit too close. Um, Alex Pereira was able to catch him with some shots and and you know then some vicious elbows, and he finished the fight. It's going to be a cracker. It's 
It's going to be an absolute cracker. Um, the main card, I believe, kicks off from 12 p.m. Uh, Eastern uh, Australian Eastern Standard Time. Uh, the prelim card kicks off from 10 a.m. And the early prelims kicks off from 8 a.m. Let me tell you, Doma, it's a must-see TV. It's must-see TV. You must tune in this weekend to the UFC. This is one of the greatest cards. Um, you know, this is probably one of the times that I will say it is actually worth buying the pay-per-view. Yeah, that's fair. It is, definitely. Nice. Very well done, Sauce. Hello, positive. Oh, I'm excited. I'm excited for this weekend, this Sunday. I'm, I'm pumped. I know you are. I, know I can see. You are absolutely ready to go. Just like we're ready to get into hobby talk. And I'll tell you what, ladies and gents, we didn't say it at the top of the show, because if you've been here this long, there is going to be a Le Mans in here somewhere. But has to be. Has to be. before we get to the Le Mans, we've got some more product that has dropped. And it is Noir Basketball Sauce, 23-24. Speaker, spotlight, speak, sneaker spotlight signatures are back. Uh, he's the critically acclaimed as Nikola Jokic. as uh, a sneaker spotlight of Luca the Don. Uh, spotlight signatures. Midnight signatures. Timmy Duncan, dual patch, auto, a quad patch. Nice. Capstones. Yeah. Midnight it's signatures, rip. capstones, just a ripoff of the cornerstones. It is. It is. It is just a ripoff of cornerstones. These are nice looking cards. They actually look it, all right, is, mate. Nice. No, no, Noir's a nice set. Noir is a very mm. nice set. Finals. Very nice. Cards per pack, 10 in the hobby box. Uh, packs per box one, boxes per case four. The set size is TBA, and the release date, ladies and gentlemen, is May 29th, 2024. So pencil that into your calendars. Auto. Magnus got a question for you. Does Wemby have no speak sneaker spotlight, no autos in this? He's got no autos. He's probably have a sneaker spotlight. You have the non auto ones. Yeah, well, that's what I was about to say. They do do those. So yeah, yeah they have non auto. No, yeah, you got to think it. about it. You got to think about it, Magna, from Panini standpoint. It'll be every a, opportunity they can get to throw a card of Wemby's in there, you know, numbered yeah. and, and whatever, insert whatever, they are going to milk the absolute shit out of it. They'll, uh, they'll put an RC on it. They'll put a next day sneaker spotlight stamp on it and uh, <laughs> they'll run with it. People will make money. They'll say it's his next rookie card. Uh, what to expect is four autos, three memorabilia cards, and three insert parallels or base cards. That's three total. Uh, positive says I'd rather shop at Coles than buy Noir. That's fair enough. There you go. So that's Noir. <laughs> Doesn't matter. Uh, Either way, you're getting ripped off. <laughs> fair call. Help your local uh, fruit shops, mate. Small Sport business. Small locals. Uh, 2324 Panini Select FIFA source. Um, split into three sections, terrace, mezzanine, and field level. We know what selects like. He's a tie-dye, multicolor, uh, Lamine Yamal. It's his rookie. Uh, we've got Christian Pulisic. Uh, stained glass of Lionel Messi. What else have they got in here? Artistic impression, stained glass and visionary. Uh, auto memes, pitch side sigs, select sigs and jumbo swatches. Select FIFA. Is this just an international set, is it? It's an international set. Yeah, okay. because there's another select uh, select Premier League I'll show next. I think we showed the Euro one a few weeks back. Yeah, we did. So this is select FIFA. Uh, our cards I, I, I per pack. It might have been, might have been tops. Oh, tops. One. It was tops. Sorry. Uh, James says, any Ricardo Pepe autos? Mate, the best thing yeah, about Ricardo Pepe, I'm just going to bring it back to the fact that everyone was collecting this guy and he didn't even get picked for the World Cup. It was the greatest moment in the hobby that all these people were spending 20K on his cards to be left holding the bag because you're a bunch of Le Mans. So, yeah, and uh, everyone buying cards- into, into sack cards breaks to, to get these stupid peppies and he's ripping <laughs> you off. I about sack cards. Rip, rip, it might be because he blocked off. He blocked us. Sack cards, Le Mans cards, uh, cards per pack, hobby five, packs per box twelve, 
boxes per case, 12. Uh, set size is 250 cards. The release date is TBA. What to expect? Auto or mem, three total, seven inserts, 14 parallels. So card hour says join at the right time. Yeah, you would have been, Vincent, you would have been all over collecting Ricardo Pepe and jumping into sack cards uh, breaks, mate. <laughs> you would have been all over it. <laughs> yeah, well, well some, some peanut paid like 15 grand for one of his cards or something. What an idiot. Oh, just as good as Johnny Sins with the bloody, uh, what's it called it? <laughs> Your boy. The hero of the hobby. The hero of the hobby. Uh, now we've got 23-24 Panini Select uh, Soccer. Uh, Premier League Soccer, sorry. He's uh, staying glass of soccer. Source is loving this. Uh, stick with Select's trademark structure. It's mezzanine, field level, and terrace. He's Cole Palmer, who's the future of the league because he beat United. Uh, you got multicolor camos, tight eyes, ze- zebra, the, and black. You know what the funniest um, thing in that game was? They they gave the man of the match to Ganacho, and then Cole Palmer kicks a hat trick, and they changed at the ground. They changed the man of the I match. Know. To Cole it was Palmer. great. It's good as mate. Um, it was so funny. Anyway, uh, you're not laughing just... really about it. You 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 were pretty pissed off at the time. I did. No, I, I wasn't did... pissed off. Did I not say to you when the penalty was given away, the game is finished? I said, we will lose this game, and we lost the game. So, uh, Kaoru Mitoma, there he is. Here he is, Harlan, Patch Auto. Artistic Impressions, Visionary of Anthony Gordon. So, what to expect? Five cards per pack, 12 packs per box, 12 Boxes per case, set size 250, release date subject to change, but pencil this one in for May 31st, 2024. Uh, what to expect? Three total auto mem cards, seven inserts, 14 parallels. Ladies and gentlemen, a bit going on with the releases. A few soccer, one basketball. Um, we like to cover those ones because they're very good sets. Um, join oh boy, don't get me started, says Vincent. Did he block you guys? Calling him a Lemon doesn't help. Yeah, he did block us. Yeah, because we gave him a Lemon and we clipped it and we tagged him too. So <laughs> that's the way we do it here. If you're a Lemon, you're yeah, a Lemon. Well, not that, well, come on, mate. Like, you know, <laughs> he's pushing this, you know, MLS soccer product, getting people to buy new breaks. And you know, tr- pumping up the spots with, uh, um, no, he's keeping all the Ricardo Pepe cards or something like that. Was he? He was keeping yeah. all yeah, the. He was doing all the breaks. Spots. He was doing all the breaks. Yes, he sold the break, but he got Ricardo Pepe's team in all the breaks. And then, and then flogged off all those cards and made absolute bank. In the meantime, sold off all the other spots, so he never he covered the cost of the boxes. So he was pretty much getting all the Pepe cards for free. Like it just absolutely ludicrous. And people, and he thought he was doing nothing wrong. Um, and you know, <laughs> you, you say, you know, people technically I'm going to actually defend him source. He was doing nothing wrong because if people were stupid enough to buy into a break where the chase is taken by the breaker, you're essentially <laughs> flushing your money down the toilet. <laughs> and I'll tell you what, you are a <laughs> lemon. You know what the funny thing about that is? With American dollars, mate, it is paper and it will flush beautifully down the toilet. So you even wipe your ass too. Yeah. So <laughs> Global, what's happening? Uh he seems to remember what he says now. It was very funny. You'd probably be able to go on his page and find it. We can't. We can't get onto any of his socials, mate. We're done. Uh Saucy, two things. We'll end on the Le Mans, of course. But you saw something by our great and powerful friend Cage um, that you wanted to bring up. Yeah, let, so, me, let me let me let me go find it. Let me go find it. Hang on, should have been I should have been prepared, ladies and gentlemen. But you know, you know the the high quality um, value producing. It's a producing, producing on the show, man. Exactly, exactly right. Told you. Right. You deal with two lemons, you get lemon quality. That's the way right. <laughs> where it works. There we go. Here it is. Here it is. Uh, so the all-powerful, encompassing uh, Mr. Cage lawyer um, over there at uh, the Hobby with Cage 
uh, podcast that he does, um, you know, for, formerly known uh, as a different name, but, uh, you know, runs it on his own. Lucas now. He makes a great point. That's right. Well, no, I forgot the name. Um, he made a great point in this post. So here we are. I'm just bringing up for those people who are listening. It's a post about a before and after uh, Jackie Robinson 1948 Leaf card. Um, and, you know, someone has, you know, cleaned and, and done things to it and, and so on. Um, and um, someone wrote a, a comment saying, uh, he screenshotted a comment from this post. First of all, he screenshotted that and he screenshotted a comment from this post and, and which someone has said, um, the problem is that the cleaning is not disclosed to the grading company or the buyers. We also don't know what the chemical is being used to clean the card. Now the next card doc will buy it, use their preferred chemicals and the cycle continues until the card disintegrates, question mark. Uh, and then someone writes, no, anyone who soaks a baseball card in water must be called out and prosecuted for their obvious fraud, right? And Cage goes on to say after, you know, seeing those, because the, the cards, are, what's happened is the person's got a, a PSA 3, a Jackie Robinson 9848 leaf card, cracked it out, uh, done a little bit of hocus pocus, soaked it, done its thing, a uh, bit of Kurt's Come Care special, and <sighs> then sent it off to SGC where it's got a 4.5 now. And anyone who's uh, unaware and anyone who thinks that PSA is the all becompassing uh, grading company, when it comes to actually uh, vintage cards, SGC is highly regarded. So getting that bump from a PSA 3 to the SGC 4.5 would significantly actually enha enhance the value of the card. Right, so here we are. We got this situation where people are doing this stuff, as we mentioned numerous times. And Cage goes on to say, "Let's discuss." Someone sent me this post uh, by by Tiffany Cards, where he points out it appears that a card in question was taken out of a PSA three and 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 then cleaned and and regraded and graded a SGC four point five. I expect to be a uh, I expect to see a, a robust comment section. Da 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 da. Says check out picture two. Assuming the card was soaked that it was submerged in water or some other solution and then that allowed for some of the dirt in the card to be removed and even some of the wrinkles to be eased or removed entirely. Is that something that should be disclosed? Question mark. Or is it an acceptable practice? Question mark, right? So what's what's the decision here? Uh, and he said, one more question. Whether it is wrong or not, how does seeing stuff like this make you feel about the hobby? Right, and I just thought it was such a great, a great post by Cage, and I went through and read some of the comments, and I thought, what better way to bring up? You know, I've I've, I've read a few of them, but let's let's go through and read some, and then see what people. Yeah, through the say, first right? one, we got to go through the first one. Big Dan, Big Dan's our boy. Like. Yeah, give it a like. Uh, it's our boy. It, it all comes back to disclosure, Dan. Dan, the card man says, uh, numerous examples of stains re returning over time. Potential buyers have a right to know, but there's a reason why it's not disclosed. Whether graders need to change stances or not is irrelevant for the time being, right? So fair point, fair point. Um, here we go. SLPC, restoring cards is not equivalent to restoring art. Works of art are true one-of-ones, not graded. Cards are many and graded determines the value. Oh, you, who would have thought? We've said that a number of times on this, on this show. <laughs> you sure that right? SLPC is not uh, the Messiah? <laughs> Right. Exactly like him. It does sound like him. Restoring them alters the grade and is purely a money grab market manipulation while it also diminishes the importance and integrity of grading. Let's crack every low grade mantle or roof while we're here and clean it, uh, clean them and resub. Right. He's tagged Kurt's card care. That's hilarious. Nat Turner's cards. Well done, mate. Tag Nat Turner a few more times. You might get blocked. Um <laughs> Dan, by the way, has jumped on Instagram. He goes, my ears are burning because we just brought up his uh, comment. There you Dan, go. Um, Dan, you're going to jump on uh, YouTube, mate. Mid you Midwest, Midwest Vintage uh, Cards. I think soaking is unacceptable. It's more than just smoothing out a corner. It's actively... Oh, here we go. This guy's happy with uh, spooning down a corner. We know Atelier Sports loves to spoon down a corner or two. So, you know, that seems like it's... <laughs> this guy, this okay guy fucking spoons, this guy spoons his card collection in bed, mate. This is what he does. <laughs> Smoothing out a corner is actively working on a card to alter its appearance. I'm sure there are counterpoints I'm not seeing, but it's sad to see card doctoring becoming more and more acceptable. 
Um, does anyone see the de degradation oh, of yeah. value happening before your eyes? We open Pandora's Knox now by uh, now everyone's questioning if their grades are legitimate. The whole point of grading was to instill consumer confidence in the product we're buying. The community is actively working on destroying it. LAFC Guna, that's an absolute cracking comment, mate. Cracking comment. I, I very much agree with it. Um, Dr. Collective Dr. says Collective. no graded stuff for the win. Oh, yeah, come Dude. on, man. You're part then of you this. you crack it out, it's come, care it, and there you go. Sell it to the next peanut, right? Um, a, someone says bless, bless and break. So I'm just reading these through, ladies and gentlemen, so you, you can let me know what you've surely, got. Surely there's I don't some know, people man. People paint that. their houses and cars and remodel them to look brand new. More importantly, women get huge fake breasts and butts. <laughs> and a, lot, a lot of us don't seem to mind when those things are altered. That's all. This is a great goat comment. I yeah, guess it problem. comes down to beauty in the eye of the beholder. Yeah. I must say, I don't like trim cards, but everything else seems open to me. If it's good enough to pass the eye test of a grader, then it's good enough to buy and eventually resell later. I'll yeah, but what, Pena, what about the situations where there's blotches and things have come back and appeared over time? Fake butts, question mark, uh, uh, Mr. Cage says. This is this is hilarious. I'm not going to read more of his responses because that was an actually hilarious comment. I didn't even – I, I just pulled that one out. Uh, we'll scroll down and random a few more and just and just. See <laughs> I love how there. everyone's taking the Simon curse. Clab, I will say you'll be surprised how much gunk can be removed with just a little HGO. It's very possible no chemical was used at all. Trying to see a positive maybe. Um, it's got a lot of replies. Let's go through. Cage says, I assume it was just water likely distilled and I'm aware has been going on for decades. The question is the same. Let's assume not water was used and the card was soaked. You were okay no. with that. No, so, it's not water. It's not distilled water, mate. Mate, it's not distilled water. It's no. uh, Kurt. Kurt. Kurt has himself has opened yeah. the Pandora box and opened it up to the masses the way he's created so many videos, um, teachings on his Instagram. He's got a whole catalog of things that he does that people are now <laughs> copying uh, with his $50 kit that they can buy. Um, Dan's – what's Dan? Are you taking shots here? He goes, oh, who would have thought Cage would be talking about this and framing it in a way like the hobby is hearing these questions for the first time? Oh, interesting. I like it. Uh, no, Dan, you've been talking about this for for yeah. No, no, that's no, what I was saying. We know that Dan. Every year, about this for young, and it, every, every every time we have the round table, it's a big talking point. All of this, um, yeah, mate, mate, no one listens look, to us. Yeah, at the end of the day, ladies, I'm not well, going to keep going on. And you can read there's over there's over 150 comments, and you can keep going. There's some some really great discussion points, but. Make sure you go check out the post on Cage Lawyer's Instagram. Um, I will, I believe I can drop this link in there. Yeah, we, we know it was your point, Dan. We get it. We know. He's firing shots. I love it. Um, where are we? Manny, welcome. Great man. Got a nice phone call from Manny the other morning when Chelsea beat United. It was very funny. And then we had a nice discussion. I won't go into the full details of our conversation, as you know, because we influenced the hobby quite a bit uh, here to look and uh, too thick. So, uh, <laughs> but uh, he just happened to piss me off that much that, you know what he, he did, Sauce? He gets his daughters on the phone who are the cutest things on the planet and gets them to say Messi is the best because he knows I can't say shit to them because I crumble, mate. I melt like butter, mate. When they, They're so cute. And I'm like, oh, that's so cute. And I said, Manny, you do know right now if that was you saying that. <laughs> I said, I jumped through the phone and just strangle you. <laughs> so he just kept getting so... <laughs> so it was very funny. He actually got his uh, youngest to pronounce Zlatan Ibrahimovic, and it could go down as one of the cutest things I've ever heard in my life. <laughs> she couldn't say it. It was very funny. Um, I, don't th I don't think Saucy did. <laughs> PSA and BGS can't detect shit. They are useless as the authentic company. Yeah, Magda. Magda's been listening. He knows what's going on. He knows what's been going on. Um, Manny with a laugh. Messi's the goat, says Magda. Yeah, look, once again, Doma, it's come to the forefront. And you know what? People yeah, know about I, it now. I, man. I know. I know what. I know. You know Dan's point in in saying you know the way that um Cage has framed that, but you know. It's um, it's a creative post in a sense, you know, the way he's been able to get the the amount of engagement that he has on that post. But you know what? It's actually good. 
it's good that people are having this discussion because, mate, we need to get to a point that, you know, people need to understand that what Kurtz Come Care is doing is not okay. It's not okay. Yeah. And the whole point we have these, you know, third, third party, uh, you know, grading and authentic authenticating companies this they're, they're supposed to be able to detect this shit but the reality is they cannot detect it they cannot detect it so you as the consumer you as the collector you have to be more wise uh going forward and you have to be aware of these things and what can you do to protect yourself i don't really know i i, I can't really you know say you know what you can do to protect yourself i mean you know yeah, the, the, and I'm, I mean, this is just one instance. We're just talking about the whole incident about potentially buying a card that's, um, you know, had this sort of altering or something done to it. And, and how can you even tell? It's tough. It's tough, especially if you're buying something, you know, here from Australia, overseas, you know, in America or in China or wherever it is. Um, and you, you know you won't really know till you, till you get it back and, and can put it under some 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 UV light and. Um, you know, stuff like that, um, bright uh, magnifying and, and stuff. But, yeah, look, it's good that it, it's being brought to the forefront um, by that post. And uh, let's hope the discussion continues. And I think it needs to continue because it needs to be pushed out of the hobby, mate. It needs to be pushed out of the hobby. Or else you're just going to always yeah. encountering scammers and scammers. But as we've said on, on this show, um, Dom up, what do we say? You can't beat him. You join him. <laughs> Kurtz, come, come, come care for the win, ladies and gentlemen. Nah, that's obviously me <laughs> taking the absolute mickey. But oh, I I'm actually, just telling you. No, oh, it's got no comment, to be honest. Uh, I don't grade. Well, I don't grade anymore. Anyone bought anything I recently I anyway? A, I haven't set a card for grading for over uh, one and a half years. Jono says he's been buying heaps of singles, sports singles. Cold Palmer is playing so gold, so good. Cold Palmer is the goat now. What happened to Garvey, Pedri, <laughs> Pepe, Coco, Vinny? That I've been meaning to make a video out of, so I probably should do that and and, and do a mail day. Manny video. says, just don't buy cards from the U us in the states. We are corrupt. Doma gets it. Yeah, they're just taking the piss out of me, Vincent. Join them. Let's go. No wonder you get so many gems, saucy. Is Dan because you got the kit? Dan, screenshot that. Make a video about Source. Ruin him. <laughs> should do it. He should actually do it as clickbait. But double coverage. Support Kurt's Conquer. <laughs> and then go on and make this docu series about Source. How he's been like trimming and soaking cards for the, since he came into the hobby. <laughs> We should fucking do it. I the swear we should side. make the, yeah, the dark, dark side, side of the of hobby. Double, no, the dark side of double coverage. <laughs> you should print out stuff off your printer and we'll say there. Be they're, like a Vice Doco. Yeah, un <laughs> uncut sheets. You just print them off your printer. Uncut sheets. <laughs> That'd be very uh... funny. Sleepy Source is corrupt. Uh, Dan says I'll interview the Messiah as my expert witness. <laughs> Film it like in a current affair episode. A hundred percent, it'd be hilarious. It'd be very funny. Uh, all right, source. Let's get on to the last thing. Hopefully, you got my uh, uh photos that I sent through. Yes, I, I do. Let me just find it. There it is. Because it's pretty interesting. So, and you've had dealings with this uh person in I have, question I have. in the past so you can talk a bit on it there's obviously text chains and that's part of the massive scam that's in the title of this so here we go uh, he, he's, so. he's, he's, uh, this was posted in in a, in a group which we're in and, and um it was run by a, a good friend of the show mailman breaks Jono, um and the team down there at mailman breaks at sports cards addicts australia and this is uh josh for who posted, who I've, he's, oh, he's very I've, active I've, in the, he's very, very active, active, in, the very active in the community right. and I'm, i think i've done had dealings with him before and everything went smoothly so you know he's always been good to deal with but this man on the other hand mr kane bundy the uh, what was what was that show is the mr Al bundy, bundy. Al bundy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Al bundy. With children. yes 
<laughs> it's either Al Bundy or King Kong Bundy that wrestled in the WWE, mate. <laughs> Kane Bundy is a lying scammer. Paid for this card almost a month ago and hasn't sent it out. Do not do business with him. Um, so it, it goes on a bit longer. Um, you know, this is some comments that people have left on the post. Uh, this is uh, Stephen. If anyone above thinks he's still legit, hang on, let me put this over here so I don't have to. All right, I can look this way. Um, this he scammed me of forty thousand dollars. Yes, you heard that right, forty thousand. Right. A uh, combination of 30,000 of Pokemon cards and 10,000 in grading fees. He said it was going to be graded. Never sent the cards, essentially. Um, long story short, he ended up being able to get some of his cards back. He owes a lot of people money, some to the small amount, a few hundred, and one case of 70 grand. Mr. Kane Bundy being a bit of a naughty boy. Um, now, it's come out before. I, this is not the first occasion. I got early whiff of Kane Bundy being a bit of a, a scammer. The thing um, a, a while ago, um, like um, here we go. He, he's a, a Mark who has posted. Unfortunately, he's a well-known for scamming people in the Pokemon community. He was a household name and got the trust of many. Uh, I know one fellow who paid him a visit to get their cards and 20K in grading fees back from him. Since then, he hasn't popped up in the Pokemon community, but I've, but I have seen him listing NBA a while ago. Sorry this happened, man. Uh, someone said, I've been scammed $950 on an NBA card in this page. Hopefully, you still get your card. Uh, da, da, da. Oh, that so you're looking, you're it, looking but... at around about 100 Gs here, just off those three people. Yes, right? Mr. Kane Bundy, right? Uh, now, if anyone's not aware who this is, he actually ran – uh, the card, it was called The Card Show Melbourne, correct? The Card Show Melbourne. That's the one right? there. It was out at Cranbourne Racecourse. It ran two times. It, it, it ran twice. The first one was good. It, you know, did all right. And he was the organizer. Obviously, clearly just a money grab. Um, And, you know, people didn't really know that he was a scammer. And the thing is, I didn't know he was a scammer. I actually had dealings with him and, and – um, Bought cards off him, got the cards, paid for the cards, no no issues at, at all. Um, but it's it's just you know it's disappointing to see that Mr. Bundy has the decided to to, to go down this path and and, and be a, a scumbag in essence. Um, this is not what the hobby is about: ripping off people, you know, taking cards, saying they're going to be graded. I'll say this first and foremost: when it comes to grading, if you're not going through cherry collectibles, the hobby, the hobby maybe. AU. The Hobby AU or Slabbed in Perth, S L A B D in Perth. Um, and I think there may be a, a few other ones. I think EJ cards do it. You know, EJ I trust EJ. It. I trust EJ cards with, with my cards, um, to name a few. And then outside oh, of that, Tra, Tra, you tra, should, uh, yeah, Tra, the, uh, Tra grading. I believe they still do, uh, down there. So I trust Gabe and the team down there that they, they do run a tight ship. So there's just a few out there for those people who, who you might not know where they want to get their cards graded. You know, who can want to use a middleman service. You can do that. You can also send your cards directly to the grading company and fuck out the middleman. Uh, then, you know, hundred percent, it's just you and PSA or you and BGS and so on. Um, so there's that option as well. Um, but Mr. Kane Bundy, to do this to people, you know, uh, you've run a card show. You, you're trying to say that you, you know, in essence, you, you're you're trying to build the hobby up here. But in essence, we, this just shows that you're just in it for uh, being a money hungry uh, pig. Uh, he used to he used to I think run a, another a page or something as well. But I think he shut that down. Where he used to actually he had allocation for a while at certain products as well. Um, but to, you know, to scam, you know, this is one thing, scam someone for a $250 card, which was posted originally. And then, you know, finding out in the comments, you've scammed people upwards of 20 grand, 30 grand, some people 70 grand, but who knows how many people you've scammed a hundred, 150, you know, and that all adds up. You probably scam people, you know, 50, 50 grand in all. Uh, there was a point there where he was selling product. I remember seeing this, uh, he's been called out a few times, you know, we, we never, we never brought it up the first time because, you know, he got called out and you sort of just let it go by. But when it, it, it you know, he's still active in the community. Um, this is where, you know, we come in as, uh, the people to let people know don't interact with this guy. If you see a name, a guy by the name of Kane Bundy, K A I N A Bundy, B U N D Y, do not deal with him. Do not deal with him. He's an absolute scumbag. And you, sir, 
Mr. Kane Bundy R A. <laughs> You are a lemon. Oh god. I'm actually done. You <laughs> you've lost the plot. You actually lost the plot. <laughs> You are a limon. <laughs> Have you seen some of the comments as well? I was pissing myself. I was actually... Um, sorry. Uh, is Bundy code name for Juanito? <laughs> <laughs> Must be his cousin, says Dan. <laughs> um, probably hiding with him hand in hand on Manila. Mate, we've got... <laughs> <laughs> Vincent is hey, the word is he's in Mexico, according to Rahul. When he does in Mexico, he's been posting some stuff. He reckons he's found one little. I told you, mate. You want to find him? Uh, we've got, we've always got pictures of one little, mate. All right, here he is. Here he is. Catch me if you can, baby. <laughs> Catch me if you can, baby. <laughs> No can. one's finding him. No one's finding one. You're never finding him, man. You're never ever finding him. Oh my days! That was great sauce. That came out of nowhere, says Vincent. It was like rock concert, saucy concert. That's what it was. Oh. Hopefully, I can. Hopefully, uh, well, I, I, look, I've got this here for a reason. It's, I, I've, I've started up a new hobby. I actually want to learn how to play the ukulele. So, hopefully, in a few months' time, I found the YouTube channel that teaches you the basics and things like that. Maybe I can actually play a tune on the show. One, one is harder to find than Osama. <laughs> <laughs> I can't. I can't do this. Oh, I swear! I gotta actually get back onto finding all random pictures and putting them back up when we talk about Juanito, and I'll just flash them up on the screen. But that definitely is my favorite one so far. Catch me if you can, baby. Look at him. He just does what he wants when he wants, this bloke. You're never going to get him. Let's have a double should, coverage stream in Hawaii. And, and, and edit it on there. On we the- actually could have done a double coverage stream in Hawaii, but I chose not to get on the stream. <laughs> Manny was on instead, and he gave me a lemon. Uh, Global says he's seen one into a gather round, scalping tickets. It could become the ultimate meme. You know what's funny? Based off that Lemon you just gave, this Kane Lemon has literally, off those four stories, just just four stories or four comments, 100 Gs. What's to say if it's not half a mil? It's just as bad as what Juanito did. It is, definitely. There's no cops knocking on his door. Yeah, you need to be careful because I know he, he he does it a lot in the AFL as well. Um, communities, he's in the Pokemon communities, in NBA. So just just be mindful of him. Also, um, also, just um, be vigilant. I know the the SA card collector show was on over the weekend. Uh, was, I heard it was fantastic and went really really well. So congrats to Stephen and the team there for all the work they put into that show. Uh, just on shows, just before I do finish, just a public service announcement. Um, if you're going to shows here in Victoria, uh, what was the last one we had at Darabin Source? What was that one? That was the the f- toy and hobby. Yeah, it was a really hot weekend, I'm pretty sure it was there. Anyway, just a public service announcement. Um, the Oracle actually got a box stolen from his table at that event. So oh, wow. you just got to be very, very, very vigilant uh, on what you put on display from now on, ladies and gents. Uh, yeah. As you know, um, it got picked up by Shano at his his show. Um, the father son combo there. The dad, the son distracting the the the, the storeholder while the dad was uh, stealing our uh, singles. 
just be very vigilant, man. Very vigilant. Um, if you've got a shelf, a shelving unit within your section, behind your table, put all your expensive stuff on the shelving unit. Um, so Obviously even if, if you, you have a card, make sure you've got a, a, yeah, a little case. In case. You know. Just be so smart with it, please. It's the last thing we want is people getting their stuff uh, stolen. And I'll tell you what, to any scumbag, I'm telling you, if you were to get caught at these shows, if anyone's giving these people a pass, I'll, I'll tell you, I'll look the other way. If you're the stall holder and you catch the bloke, I will look the other way. That's all I'm saying. I will look the other way and say, I saw nothing here. That's all I'm going to say. If you catch the person that steals your card, because that is a dog act and it's disgusting. And especially those stories where we hear um, the fathers using their kids, mate, as as bait so they can steal cards. Like Just that crazy. is, that's disgraceful. It, it really is. What kind of an example are you setting for your children, mate? at the same time as being a low-life scumbag yourself. So just uh, be very careful. That's all I had to say on that because uh, obviously it's happened to a few people we know, but obviously this is a recent one. It's happened to someone we know. So, yeah, keep your good cards locked away in cases, 100%. I think that's what I was trying to imply, Magda. <laughs> but uh, Manny says, Juanito Bundy and that little kid that sold the Mac Jones all scam someone for 100K. <laughs> uh, last last but not least, before we finish up, any pickups? You got anything? No, no, no. I've got something. I actually got this gifted to me. I got it gifted to me, which was quite nice, actually. The Oracle saw me and he gifted me a card and... It's a leaf card. It's my first leaf card. Uh, it says in here the authenticity of these memorabilia pieces is guaranteed by leaf trading cards. So authentic patches. It is a quad patch source. Right here. Of Kobe Bryant, Cristiano Ronaldo, Mike Trout, and Roger Federer. So nice. Big thank, big thank you to the Oracle. Love him dearly. Bit of leaf action. Bit of leaf action. So it's a nice card, mate. Sitting here on my desk on a stand. So yeah. And the the Federer one, it's actually interesting, as crazy as it sounds, but it actually looks like a like a sweat mark on because it's white material. Yeah. And it's like yellowed. It's it's actually very funny. And the the yellow Kobe Bryant piece from his jersey looks uh, worn in. Shame it's missing missing Messi. <laughs> he would have sold it. He wouldn't have given it to me if it had Messi on it. Even he knows it's worthless. And it's actually numbered to five, just letting you know as well, which is awesome. Very nice. So one, it's a one eBay one on one source, one of five. So it's the most rare of the five cards. <laughs> Hey, in the AFL hobby, everyone likes to chase the one. It's worth more, apparently. <laughs> Manny so. said, love that card. Oh, God, imagine a sweat mark from Ronaldo. Card would be so screwed. Dan, don't fire. Probably rip out the patch and smell it every night before bed. Oh, you're an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> you're an idiot. <laughs> Uh, or on game on game day at his, his local soccer, he's Ronaldo. I need, you, I, need, I need your power today. I could have used it on Saturday. I tell you that much. Could have used all the Ronaldo power on the planet. So easy. All right. On that note, uh, ladies and gentlemen, thank you once again for tuning in. Keep living, loving, and breathing sport. Double coverage. Don't forget to like. And subscribe, Manny, my sweet Prince Ronaldo. <laughs> He's a and god. Share. And share. And share. And share. Peace out. Peace, ladies and gents. Thank you for tuning in. Please don't forget to leave a review on the Apple Podcasting app. Also, follow us on socials, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and TikTok. Talking old spots. Double curve.